<clears throat> so start to follow your breath. And if one small reason to celebrate hasn't come to you yet, as you follow your breath, maybe it will. So just take a few more breaths, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the nose. Continue to do that. So not manipulating the breath in any way, unless you want to start to extend the breath. And maybe today, holding the breath for just a moment on the exhale. So inhaling four or five counts, and then exhaling four or five counts, and then holding for just a count or two at the bottom. And do that again, gently inhaling and exhaling and suspending and one more time inhaling and exhaling and suspending the breath just for that moment and then inhale again and exhale out that intention that you set knowing that you can always come back to that and the breath as we practice And then on your next exhale, go ahead and draw your knees into your chest. Maybe rock from side to side if that feels good. Start to feel in your spine and the muscles around the backs of your ribs and your hips. And then come back to center and make some circles with your ankles in one direction. And then go in the other direction. And come back to stillness. So welcome, Jackie. We are starting on our backs. We want to have a strap or old necktie. And on an inhale, hold the backs of your thighs and take your heels to the ceiling. And then just point your toes and flex your toes a little bit. Start to feel your hamstrings. The muscles in your lower legs, flex and point. And then draw your knees back into your chest again. And go ahead and plant your feet flat on the ground. So we're going to do those big three low back strengtheners. One is bridge pose. So maybe you can touch your heels with your fingertips already. All right. And on an inhale, lift your hips up. And exhale, drop them down. <clears throat> so Jackie, as you get ready, <clears throat> it seems to help folks to have there. So keep just doing, keep doing bridge poses, folks. Lifting up and down, it helps to have your screen like up on a stool or a low chair. And I'm going to go ahead, um, Jackie, if you want to unmute and ask any questions, feel free. So we're just going to inhale, lift up, and exhale, drop down a couple more times. <clears throat> inhale, lift up, exhaling down. So this last bridge pose we're going to hold, right? So push into your big toe mound, especially inhaling, lift your hips up, right? Broaden your collarbones and see if you can get your front body longer and higher up. Maybe you want to interlace your hands underneath you, tucking your shoulder blades together. One more deep inhale. Stay up as you exhale. Maybe suspend the breath at the bottom. Then inhale, lift a little more. And exhale, release your hands if you have them together and drop your hips. And then walk your feet out to the edges of your mat. And just windshield wiper your knees from side to side. So 
So that's the first one of the big three bridge pose. So the other one we did yesterday as well. So you have options, lots of options to modify here. You can keep your left foot bent, foot flat, left knee bent, foot flat on the ground and just stretch your right leg out, flex your toes back towards your knee. So the um, least taxing on your low back would be this. On an exhale, you're just gonna lift your straight leg, your right leg, and let it hover over the mat for a couple breaths. If you want a little more challenge, you could stretch the left leg out. If you want a little more challenge, you could lift your shoulders and just gaze upward at the ceiling. You'll feel how that really works all those abdominals. And then gently release. So starting from the least taxing right, you could bend that right knee, plant your foot on the ground, draw the left toes back towards your knees. So work on just listening to my voice, right? So you don't have to uh, stretch your neck in funny directions. On an exhale, lift your left straight leg, let it hover. If you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, you could straighten your right leg out on the ground, or you could lift your shoulders and gaze upward. And then gently release. So we're going to do the right leg again once, the left leg again once, and then we're going to try both legs, but only if you feel like it's safe for your low back. One of the things you can do when we get to both legs is tuck your palms underneath your pelvis, facing down. So here we go with the right leg. Exhale, just gently lift the leg straight, let it hover, maybe gazing upward, lifting your shoulders too. One more deep inhale. Nice, and exhaling, gently release down. Take a breath. Then on your next exhale, left leg up, maybe the shoulders and the head as well. And releasing down. Right away, go to the right side again. Exhale, hover the leg, maybe the shoulders as well. Keep pulling that low belly in and let it go. Inhale deeply and exhale, left leg up. And then gently release. So maybe again, like I said, tucking your uh, palms facing down under your sacrum to try both legs. And on an exhale, lift both legs, hover. You can keep your head on the ground or you could lift your shoulders. Take a breath. And gently release. So get your hands out from underneath you. If you have them there, bend your knees again and rock your feet from side to side or rock your knees from side to side. So then we're gonna go into those third the third of the big three, <clears throat> side plank. So roll onto one side. Again, you have options. You can keep your knees slightly bent. And when you push into your elbow, just come up onto that bottom knee, right? Or you can straighten your legs out and keep your feet stacked one over the other so that when you lift up, you're on the outside edge of your bottom foot, right? Maybe you want to take that top arm to the ceiling Maybe you can make some wrist circles. Okay. Or you could take your fingertips to the base of the skull and really puff out your chest, tuck your tailbone. Just keep breathing. One more deep breath. Nice. And exhaling, gently release. So I'm just going to come up to seated. Perhaps we could all do this. We'll just take an easy twist stretch so that uh, it'll give us an opportunity to turn around so we don't have our backs to each other. So I'm sitting on that one hip that was on the bottom. Get tall on your inhale, on your exhale, you're going to twist away from your feet. Ooh, I feel a little bit that muscle I was trying to stretch, right? The glute medius around the bottom of that hip. Shoulders nice and relaxed. and gently release. And just because we can, we should take the opportunity to do both poses. We switch to the other side. 
So I'm gonna rock back onto my sacrum, right? Lift my heels so that my shins are parallel to the ground. And maybe reaching your fingertips forward. So just keep your chest lifted. Come back to that intention that you set. The, you can always drop your feet, right? Is a modification. Or bring your hands back to the floor. Couple more deep breaths. Puff that chest out. Spread your collarbone wide. Relax your jaw. Nice. And exhaling gently release. We'll go right to that side twist to take your feet to the other side. Sit up really, really tall. And exhaling, twist away from your feet. Gently release, then we're going to just fold right down onto that side for side plank on this second side. So again, knees could be bent, you could be lifting up onto your knee, or you could straighten them out. Right, on an inhale, get nice and long. So maybe that top hand stays on the hip or it goes up in the air, or you take it behind the skull. Puffing your chest out wherever you are. Maybe even giving yourself that mental or actual pat on the back for showing up already, taking care of yourself. You got this. One more deep inhale. And exhale, gently release. Nice. So we're gonna rock back onto our backs, but maybe before you do that, I'm gonna show you this thing. So we did it with our legs yesterday. We're gonna try and do it with our legs and our arms today. So basically our feet were in the air laying on our back and we did this. We lowered one leg, then we took them both out to the side, then we switched and came back, right? So we lower one leg out to the side, switch and come back up. So we're gonna do that with our legs. You might wanna try doing it with the opposite hands too. It's a real brain teaser, right? So roll onto your back, draw your knees into your chest, and then take your heels to the ceiling. So today we're gonna to lower our right leg first. Let's just try it with the legs first. So keep the left leg where it is, lower the right leg, let it hover. Then on your next inhale, scissor your legs open in a straddle. Now your left leg goes down and your right leg stays up and your left leg comes back to meet it. Right leg down, scissor open. Left leg down, right leg up and left leg comes back to meet it. One more time. Right leg down, scissor open. Left leg down, right leg up in line with your hips. And then left leg comes back. Everybody switch, right? So don't overthink it, just drop the left leg down. Scissor your legs open. Switch, bring the feet back in line with the heels, left leg up. And right leg. Left leg starts down, scissor open. Legs come back to center with the left leg up. Right leg comes to meet it. One more time. Left leg down, scissor open. Left leg up, right leg comes back to meet it. You wanna try it hands and feet? Okay, so, <laughs> I don't even know. So the um, opposite arm's gonna go overhead, right? So I don't even know if I can get my left and right straights, but you know what we're trying to do. So right leg down, left leg up, scissor everything open. And left leg down, right arm overhead, and then we all come back to the top. Let's try that one more time. Right side. Right leg down, left arm up. This is where everything open. Then switch and come back to center. All right, we're just going to try it twice on the opposite side. So now left leg down, right arm overhead. Scissor open. Switch and back to center. One more time. Left leg, right leg, everything open. Right leg, left arm, <laughs> come on back up. And just drop your knees into your chest and rock from side to side. All right, so just a nice uh, hip opener, hamstring, whatever silliness. Okay, so you have the option to roll to one side or rock back and forth on your shoulders and your hips come back up to seated. All right. Okay, we're gonna take another uh, seated twist. So I'm gonna tuck my 
left foot underneath me, my hip. If that bothers your knee, then just stretch your left leg out in front of you. It may not be right for you to cross your hip over as well, right? So if you've had uh, hip replacement, you might want to keep your foot in line. But if you can, you can cross over, right? So you're going to sit up really, really tall. Then you take this top arm up and over. So my right leg's, on, right leg's on top today. I'm not being in the mirror, right? So sit up really, really tall. And exhale, twist toward that top leg. Maybe you can push into your right foot a little more, pull the low belly and take the left arm in the air, and then cross it outside the thigh. So you're getting all the benefits, right? You just want to sit up really, really tall. Just think about the spine, keeping it long, twisting like a corkscrew. Nice. And then exhale and gently release. And we're simply going to switch sides. So coming through a staff, seated staff pose, right? Just stretch your legs out. Notice one side to the other. And then cross the other over however it works for you. Leg bent, foot crossed, foot not crossed. We're all tucked in there, right? So then take your left arm up overhead. Really getting the spine, uh, the spine nice and long and open. Push into that left foot. Maybe take the right arm up in the air and cross it over. Settle your gaze, let your hips be heavy. And exhaling, gently release. Good. So we're going to come through all fours to standing. So just bring one leg forward, knee right over the ankle right, curl that back leg, back knee up, bring your back foot to meet your front, hands on the thighs, crown of the head reaching out nice and long, and then come on up, standing. So the pose I want to get into that glute medius today is uh, triangle pose. So we're going to take a big wide scuttle. Now, I will be your mirror here, so turn your right toes out. All right. Kind of soften the knees a little bit, so those are our, um, our shock absorbers, right? So soften a little bit so that you can tilt your pelvis and then straighten your legs again. So you could do this back up against the wall. It actually feels really nice against the wall. So you want to keep your bottom ribs pulling toward your thigh. You can rest your hand on your thigh or your shin, just no weight in the knee. I want you to, the action here is tucking your top hip under and forward so that you can feel that stretch. You might need to go a little bit lower to feel the stretch, but right there in that glute medius. So keep pushing that top hip under and forward. And maybe you take your top arm to the ceiling. All right. So inhale, make your spine longer. Exhale, maybe you could go a little bit deeper and get into that hip flexor. That, uh, Sorry, the glute medius. And maybe try that a couple times. Inhale, get longer. Exhale, soften a little more. And bring your hand back to your hip if it was in the air. Look down at your big toe. Soften that knee. Bring your hand to the thigh. And come on up safely. And turn those toes in. Maybe bend your knees a little bit. Right. So heel to arch alignment, turn the left toes out now. Soften the knees so that you can tilt your pelvis. All right, so maybe hand on the thigh, maybe hand on the shin might feel differently on this side of work. I'm rotating that top hip under and forward. Ooh, feels so good. Might have something to do with the run. Now we're just staying active however we can. Maybe you go a little deeper. Legs firm, upper body light. And top hand to the hip. Look down at your big toe. Soften that knee. 
hand to the thigh and come on up to standing safely and turn those toes in. So lift your chest, there's a nice easy hamstring stretch here. On an exhale, folding yourself forward, you keep the knees a little bit bent. So most of I do this with the spine straight, the feet are kind of pigeon-toed. You could grab hold of a block, or maybe your fingertips come to the ground. Or maybe it's okay for you to fold all the way over, bring your forehead, the crown of your head toward the ground. So again, inhale and make the spine long. Exhale and see if you can deepen. One more time. Inhale, make the spine long. So be mindful of your head being below your heart. You might want to keep it in line with the heart, right? So preventing that dizziness. And then everybody bend your knees deeply. Bring your hands to your thighs. Just gaze down at the spot under your nose for breath. I'm going to invite you to look forward as you start to bring your head over your heart. And then inhale and come on back up to standing. Good. Nice. And then heel toe your way in. Right, so you get your feet back on your hips. I'm going to do one tree pose today because one leg balances are important too, right? So shift your body weight into one leg. Maybe bring your hands to your heart center to start. You could go against the wall. You can hold on to a piece of furniture. So foot on the calf, or again, above the knee, just no weight in the knee. So come back to your breath. Come back to your intention. And use your drishti, just gazing at one thing that's not moving. Maybe you want to grow your tree somehow, maybe taking your arms up in the air. Nice. One more breath. These are awesome. Nice. And exhaling gently release. Maybe walk it out a little bit. And then we'll go to the other side. Shift your body weight. Side, where you want to put your foot. Try to keep shoulders, hips, everything facing forward, right? And once you get steady, maybe grow your tree. job and then exhale gently release and walk it out okay we're coming back down to the mat so bring yourself forward inhale take your arms up over the head soften your knees and exhale driving forward wherever it's safe for you inhale come halfway up that half forward fold fingers under the knees and then exhaling, bend the knees, take one leg way, way back in high lunge, doesn't matter which one, just make sure the front knee stays over the ankle, that's how your knees stay safe, right? Float the back knee down, bring the other one to meet it, and rock your hips from side to side. So let's do bird dog, take your right leg out behind you, left thumb to the ceiling, feel like somebody's pulling on your wrist, and your ankles that are in the air. Right? And in the spirit of adventure, take your right arm out to the side. Keep your left toes, uh, turn your right toes pointing to the side, but then maybe bring them like on the clock face to three o'clock. So my hand is at nine o'clock, my foot is at three o'clock. And then bring them back to center, super challenging and hand and knee to the mat, rock your hips from side to side again. Make sure your fingers are spread wide. Inhale, the left heel out, right thumb to the ceiling. And then maybe take the right arm out to three o'clock, the left foot to nine o'clock, and move over. Take a breath. 
then bring them back in line, 12 and six, and go ahead and put the hand and the knee down, rock your hips from side to side, and it would feel good for you to take a child's pose, try that, hips toward the heels. All right, or you could stay in all fours, Couple of breaths. Nice. Then on the inhale, bring your shoulders back over your wrists. We're coming down to the mat, so walk your knees behind you so that your spine is nice and long, right? Bring the knees up through the crown of the head. On the exhale, squeeze your elbows in and try and let your hips be the last thing to hit the ground. And then stretch your legs out. Take your fingertips out beyond the mat and above forward of your shoulders. So we give our, our shoulder girdle a little more space. Push the tops of the feet into the mat. We're going to do three cobras here. So inhaling, tuck your tailbone, but lift your shoulders and gaze forward. And exhale, forehead to the mat. So first two actions, push the tops of the feet into the mat. Tuck the tailbone, making the sacrum long and wide, and then inhale, gently arch. So it's about the upper back. And exhale, forehead to the mat. One more time, feet push, tailbone tucks, then we lift the shoulders. And exhale, forehead back to the mat. You can make a pillow for your head with your hands. And just take a couple deep breaths here. So this is like a belly shavasana. So gentle back bend is really good for us. So a good place too to think about the actions of the legs. If you think about rotating your thigh bones forward and tucking your tailbone, you'll feel how that makes the sacroiliac joint at the base of your spine, your pelvis, nice and wide. That's the action that we want to keep as we work on squeezing our inner thighs together and lifting our heels. We're not crunching the low back, we're keeping the sacrum wide. And exhale, gently release. So let's do that again. Push the feet into the mat, rotate your thigh bones inward, tuck your tailbone, and then work on lifting your heels. And exhale, gently release down again. One more time, push the feet Rotate the thigh bones inward, then lift the heels. If you want to get a little more traction in your spine, you can lift your shoulders and reach your fingertips toward your heels to keep your spine long. And exhale, you gently release forehead back under the hands and rock your hips from side to side. So we want to do some upper back strengthening too. We're going to keep our legs working, so push the tops of the feet into the mat. Bring your, let your forehead come to the mat, but bring your fingertips to the base of your skull and then lift your elbows. Right, so this is just about straightening the arms. Try and keep the elbows lifted as much as you can, tailbone tucked. On inhale, reach your arms out wide, V for victory. And then exhale, elbows up, but fingertips back to the skull. Inhaling V for victory. Exhale, fingertips back to the base of the skull. Tuck the tailbone one more time. Inhale, V for victory. And exhale, fingertips back with the elbows. And gently release and rock your hips from side to side. Nice work. So we're gonna finish with some nice juicy stretching Bring your hands under your shoulders, maybe close to your waist, pull your low belly in. See if you can get your hips up first, back to all fours. So we're gonna do pigeon pose. If it doesn't work for you, for you to do pigeon pose on your legs, I'll quickly show you the modification, all right? So if, you're, if you can't bring your one knee forward and be on your legs, you wanna safely roll onto your back and do like the, the uh, number four thing with your ankle crossed over your thigh. Right, both work, but if you're able, 
to be on your legs. Take one knee forward outside your wrist and then shimmy the shin so that it's more parallel to the frontage of your mat. Shouldn't be any pain in the knee. Then you walk your back leg back. So before we fold forward, maybe lift your chest. Feel your body weight all the way down the midline. So not flopping one side or the other. And then exhaling. Allow your chest to fold forward, but your spine to be nice and long. Feel free to wiggle around in this pose if it would feel good. Or stay still. Don't go so deeply that you're screaming to get out of it. Be here for a little bit. So adjust as you need. Last couple breaths, find some place to release some tension, let go. And pull your low belly in, and on an inhale, use your hands, bring yourself back up. If you're on your legs, come back to all fours, maybe some wiggling around or a downward facing dog, however you want to transition to the other side. If you're on your back, maybe drawing your knees into your chest, and then we get ready to go to the other side. So on your legs, knee outside the elbow, on your back, ankle crosses over the thigh, and you shimmy the shin a little closer to parallel to the edge of the mat, and walk your back leg straight back. Make your spine long. And then on an exhale, gently folding forward. So if you're on your back and you're holding on to the thigh of the bottom leg, gently pulling that thigh toward your chest, right? So if this pose isn't working for you, Maybe finding another gentle twist. A little hamstring stretch. That's what we're going to go next. A few more deep breaths here. Nice. And on the inhale, coming out of the pose. Slowly and safely. Eventually, we all want to be on our backs. And this is where you're going to want to have a strap. So when you get there, the left leg could stay bent or stretched out. And you're going to wrap the right, the strap around the ball of your right foot. You might want to bend and straighten a couple times. It's getting into the back of the leg, so this is a big part of keeping our spine healthy, right? Just balancing the muscles. So a few breaths here. We're going to do the IT band again, or today. We don't always do. So hold both ends of the strap in your left hand and take your right arm out to the side for some counterbalance and then start to take the leg across the body. So to get deeply into the IT band, you really have to work at keeping your legs straight. So even if that means you have to take your heel down a little more, try and keep the leg straight. So you could roll all the way over and then think about pulling the right hip back or you could kind of keep the right hip pulling back and only go as far as your IT band will allow. You might feel it below the knee, you might feel it more in the hip joint, or all the way from one point to the other. And pull the low belly in. Take the leg back up to center, switch the hands, 
holding the thigh with the right foot now, left arm out for counterbalance and take the leg out to the side. Really work on keeping the opposite side of your body glued to the mat. Work in the core. Relax the neck. Nice. And pull that low belly in. Bring that right leg back up. Release the tie. Let's take a moment to notice the difference. So stretch the right leg out to meet the left on the mat. Bit of a small pleasure. And when you're ready, we'll go to the other side. So the right knee can be either bent or stay stretched out. Wrap the strap around the ball of your left foot and start to get into the back of the left leg. Bending and straightening if it's helpful. And then settling in for a few breaths. So you walk your arms up the strap so your arms are straight. And then spread the backs of your shoulder blades into the mat. Then hold the strap in your right hand, take the left arm out to the side, and take the leg across the body nice and slowly, finding that IT band stretch. It's a great stabilizer, but it gets really tight. Takes a while to lengthen out. Deep exhale. And pull that low belly in. Bring the leg back up to center. Switch the arms. And take the leg out to, to the side, rooting the opposite side of your body. A couple more breaths. Pull the low belly in, bring that leg back up to center, release the strap, stretch the left leg out to meet the right. You might want to stay here. You might want to bend the knees and do another bridge pose. But getting ready to settle into Shavasana, the most important pose of all, right? So if your low back is feeling challenged, you could bend your knees. Take your feet a little bit wide and let your knees flop inward. Again, that's keeping the back of the sacrum wide. Or you could do a Vatakanasana bound angle. And you know, just notice that that's going to do the opposite to your sacroiliac joint. So feet together, knees flopped open, or traditional Shavasana stretched out. Whatever works for you. So one more time, inhale. That small celebration, or maybe it was a big one. And exhale, let it go and simply follow your breath. I'll let you know when it's time to get moving again. So before you get moving, feel your body completely supported by the ground underneath you, especially from the hips, 
the shoulders to the back of the head. And start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Maybe wrists and ankles. Maybe big morning stretch. So you have two options. Keep your eyes closed. You can gently bend your knees and roll to one side, cradling your head and the bottom arm in the embryo pose, getting ready to begin again. Or you could come all the way up to seated. Take your pick. Came across this beautifully simple po uh, quote from H. Jackson Brown Jr., who wrote a little book of inspiration, Life's Little Instruction Book, I think it's called. He says, think big thoughts, but relish small pleasures. So if you haven't already pushed yourself up to see it, go ahead and take a couple of breaths to do that. On an inhale, invite everybody to take their arms out to the side with a big breath of gratitude for the small pleasures. Excellent, bring your hands to your heart center. Take that little bit of joy off the mat with you today. The spirit in me honors the spirit in each of you. Namaste.